G'day, Eddie Springer from Springer Solar again, here to talk to you today about solar regulators. We've covered batteries and dual battery systems and solar panels. Um, today I want to talk to you about getting the energy from our solar system into our batteries. And we do that with our solar regulators. There's different types of regulators, different inputs and amp ratings. We'll discuss the, the, which best uh, regulator will suit your system and your installation. The two different types of regulators on the market are pulse width modulation regulators, so something like this, and also our MPPT regulators. MPPT are newer, more sophisticated regulators. We'll cover those in a minute. Let's talk about our, our conventional pulse width modulation regulator. This is a plasmatronic PL20. This used to be the staple of regulators. It's an Australian made product used in Kedron caravans, used by a lot of caravan manufacturers, used by a lot of telecommunications uh, providers for converting solar energy to charge batteries. And being a pulse width modulation regulator, it's a very simple way of converting solar energy into our battery. It's more just like a switch. It'll, it'll charge our battery up, it'll switch on and switch, switch to float, switch off uh, when, when the batteries are full. They're cheap to buy, they're easy to use, but they're limited in the voltage input that we can put into it and the, ch and the voltage output. So this regulator will do 12 or 24 volts. Same as this regulator here, both pulse width modulation regulators, but it means we must match our panel voltage to our battery voltage. So if we're charging 12 volt batteries, we need to use a 12 volt panel. So we looked at panels uh, in our last episode, 12 volt, 36 cell solar panel, charging a 12 volt battery, we can use a pulse width modulation regulator or PWM. If we've got a 24 volt panel, you know, our 72 cell panel, and we're charging a 24 volt battery bank in maybe a truck or a motorhome, we can use this regulator. But we can't use a 24 volt panel to charge a 12 volt battery with this guy. We can't use a 20 volt panel to charge our 24 volt battery. We need an MPPT for that. So pulse width modulation, simple setup, reliable, good quality if you're buying the right brands, Plasmatronic and Victron, uh, and very easy to use. But be careful the panel types you put through it and the battery voltages you run. The next type of solar regulator is the new MPPT. Now when I say new, they've been around for a long time, but previously MPPTs were quite expensive and were only made for very large solar system setups. So for our off-grid properties out in the bush, we'd be using a, a large uh, scale MPPT to convert that sun's energy to charge our batteries. We've now got MPPT regulators in various sizes, from uh, 10 amps right through to 100, 100 amps. And various input voltages, from a 75 volt input right up to 150 volt input even got 250 volt input. So they can do different things. The MPPT regulators I'm showing here are all uh, branded Victron. We use and recommend Victron regulators because they have a long warranty. So they have a five year warranty and they're very easy to use and easy to design around, around system voltages and around current ratings. Victron have a MPPT design software available on their website. We will show you a link for that. It allows you to input the specifications from your solar panels and how many solar panels you have and the battery voltage you're running to determine which regulator is gonna best suit your needs. But as a simple setup, we look at the first two numbers on our MPPT regulator is the voltage input. So this one is a 7515. So it can handle up to 75 volts of DC input. So it can handle a 36 volt, 20 volt nominal panel. Both of those panels on their own 
through a 75 volt input regulator will work perfectly. And it, the second number is the current or the amp rating. Okay, that tells us how, much, how many amps can pass through this regulator. With most solar controllers and solar regulators, that, that amp rating is the maximum allowable pass-through current for the regulator. You can put more energy into it, but it will only allow 15 amps output when we're talking about that one. So we can oversize our solar panels to it. We can go a little bit above the wattage of the, in the specifications for the size of the regulator, but we're wasting or we're clipping that last bit of energy. So don't be too afraid to oversize your solar panels a little bit for your solar regulator. A lot of this new type of regulator technology is starting to have better data and better comms. Now, our old school regulator had a screen on it. None of these regulators have screens because most of the time we've all got a screen in our pocket. It's our mobile phone. So these regulators can connect to your phone through Bluetooth. You can see your data, you can see the wattage out of the panel, we can see the current it's delivering, and we can see our battery voltage, all via Bluetooth. We've just got to be within distance or within range of our regulator. We don't need connection to a network, we don't need a mobile phone tower nearby, we're just connecting via Bluetooth. Allows us to start to see maximum minimum voltages on our battery bank. We know then, when we wake up the next morning, how low our batteries got at three o'clock in the morning while we're all asleep and the fridge was running before the sun started charging those batteries back up again the next day. So Bluetooth technology and MPPT regulators have allowed us to get better data out of our system. So an MPPT regulator will get you more energy out of the system. The way it does that is by stepping that higher voltage panel down to a lower voltage battery. So these were originally designed for higher voltage panels charging 12 volt batteries. You can use a 12 volt panel on a 12 volt battery through an MPPT, but if you want to start really pushing the yield and pushing the amount of energy, the, the overall energy you get from your system each day, you increase your panel voltage. Now you go from a 12 volt to a 24 volt or a 20 volt nominal panel to charge our 12 volt batteries. By doing that, we're also reducing the losses we'll have in our cables. You know, higher voltage output from our panels is lower current on the input side to our regulator, which means less losses, less voltage drop, less losses in those cables when charging our battery. So we'd want our regulator as close as possible to our battery because it's then stepping down to our 12 volt or 24 volt output. And then we've got this high voltage DC might be 36, it might be, if there was two panels in series, 72 volts coming into our regulator and then stepping down to 12 or 24 volts. That's how they yield more energy. Maximum power point tracking regulators, they're always looking for the most amount of area under that voltage and current curve to deliver that energy to our battery. With all of these regulators, you know, they even give you little symbols on the front on how to connect them up. Okay, we've got our battery input. We're connecting between the regulator and our battery. We want to ensure that we're sizing that cable adequately to handle the current and the voltage of our system. Should always be, always be putting a fuse or circuit breaker between the battery and the regulator. We're protecting that cable in our system. We don't want to connect anything to a battery without a fuse or circuit breaker. The next input on this regulator here is the PV input. That's where our solar panel connects to. You know, it's marked positive and negative. Our solar input is there, our battery connection is beside it. The last two terminals on this is a load terminal. Load terminal we wouldn't use as much in an RV or a four wheel drive, but we do use it when we're setting up solar and batteries to turn on street lighting or we're turning on certain products that we want to use overnight. We use our solar panel to determine when the sun's gone down the regulator then knows that the sun, there's no more sun and it turns on our light for our street lighting or our jetty lighting or our boat lighting. So that terminal can be used and with a smart regulator that's Bluetooth controlled, we can program that load output terminal. On our portable solar panels, again, smart controllers. This guy, Bluetooth compatible. 
It's an MPPT regulator. It allows us to harvest more energy small solar setup. And we can connect to it. We can see what it's doing. We can see the energy out of that system. It allows us to track the sun a little bit. If we didn't have a compass or we want to see where we're getting highest performance out of our panels, get the phone out, look at the wattage of the panel and, and move this around to the optimum angle of the uh, portable setup and also the optimum azimuth, the optimum uh, direction for our sun. So although these regulators will allow you to go up to 150 volts DC on the input, we need to be careful that if we are going above 120 volts that we're using a licensed electrician. Okay, 120 volts is a cutoff for doing uh, unlicensed work with DC. So two panels in series, two of our larger panels in series, will get us up to about 80 or 90 volts DC. Three panels in series will take you over that 120 volt limit. So although these do allow 150 volt input, they do allow three panels to be seriesed on them, you will need licensed tradespeople to work on that. Use the Victron uh, calculator and the Victron software to allow you to determine the voltage input into the regulator. Voltage out of a solar panel is affected by temperature. The colder it is, the higher the voltage output. If you go over the 75 volt input limit on your regulator, you will do damage to it, irreparable damage. So you need to ensure that you're designing that input and that regulator to suit the maximum minimum temperature and the overall voltage of your system. If you are putting solar panels in series, you need to be aware that if one is shaded, the other panel in series with that panel is affected. You might be better off putting your panels in parallel. Although you're not going to have as high a voltage coming into our regulator, and we're not going to yield as much energy from our MPPT, they might be better off in parallel because if one is shaded, the other will still continue to perform. So there are lots of factors to, that go into designing the solar system and designing the regulator setup. Simple one and two panels, you know, you can do quite easily. Talk to guys like us, talk to your local installer if you want to do it yourself. But if you want a decent big solar setup and you are going above 120 volts DC, you need to talk to qualified people, you need to talk to licensed electricians and get it done properly. Safe travels out there guys, thanks very much for your time.